hello again. My name is David. Let's doodle. My eyes water when I do voices. I realized uh, in editing the last one, I didn't really explain what uh, the show is or, you know, like what the what the concept is. So basically, all right. So today we are going to be doing self-portrait. Got your pen and paper handy. Right at the, the top, the your name. If you don't uh, remember your name, just make up one. Uh, I'm gonna just go with David because. My name. This episode is definitely not going to be as long or as good as the first episode. It's about me and you know, who gives a crap about your thoughts about yourself. So I'm just, uh, I like to start with the eyes because eyes are pretty tricky. Obviously these aren't identical, but they're close enough. And I also like to do, because I have a more cartoony style, I can kind of get away with doing like, someone was telling me the other day that they thought my style is indicative of all of my insecurities. Like I tend to draw characters with oversized heads and uh, I give them guts and lots of freckles and pimples and things. But I actually think it's sort of an amalgamation of both my, my insecurities, but also kind of how I wish I looked. I don't have as defined freckles as this. I wish I did. A girl came in the other day with really cute freckles and I told her I wish mine were as defined as hers. And she said she wished she didn't have any. Just kind of goes to show grass is always greener uh, on the other face. Have you been? Yeah. I'm gonna do a very brief summary of myself. I'd say I probably made up out of three major qualities. What's your favorite tea? Who cares? Mine is chai tea. Wanted to make this show as stereotypical as possible. I think a chai tea latte is a pretty good indicator of my personality. Sweet and soothing, but with a little spice to it and definitely not for everybody. Although, it's marketing tries to appeal to everyone. I love movies, man. I, I really don't like saying things for sure about myself. It really annoys me when I hear someone say, I'm a filmmaker or I'm an author. You know when you're a doctor, you know when you're an engineer, you know when, um, yeah. But for artistic things, it's kind of like, to what degree are you a filmmaker that really qualifies you to say that statement? Because it seems silly for me to use the same descriptor of my our job, my pursuits, as someone like David Lynch or Alfred Hitchcock. But if you say the word aspiring, to some people that just sounds like you have no backbone or that you're just completely self-doubting. And I am, but I don't want to appear that way because that too. What I mean is I'm just super aware of um, transience, you know, like that everything's coming to an end, that, uh... A little smoke, a little drink, what's it mean? The glow of friendship, the ash of time, blowing into the stars. I mean, I literally have memories being a sophomore in high school and thinking ahead and being like, guys, seriously, it, we're gonna, it's gonna feel like no time at all and we're graduating. We need to take advantage of this now. We're gonna be sophomores next year. We're gonna be juniors next year. Senior year's coming up, it's, it's going fast. And I think, and some part of me always thought that if I was like that, it, it would help stave off having a major existential crisis. But actually I think it just kind of, well, I don't know. I think it makes me an okay, a, a, like a better artist and sometimes a better person. I was having a really interesting discussion with my friend Andrew the other day, and then I uh, made some observation about the discussion we were having and what it said about us. It made me, and I guess in a way, made him step outside ourselves. After I did that, I was like, I asked him, why do I do that? Because I do that a lot when I talk to him specifically, because we tend to have these very sort of, and he was like, maybe it's a way for you to feel control over 
a situation that you don't have control over, that puts me above the people in the conversation. It makes me feel powerful. Um, and that, let, comment below, am I a shitty person? I guess we'll, we'll find out. Number three. I mean, I, I try to, at least. I've become more selfish as I've gotten older. I've become more calloused. Deep down, it's it's rooted out of a desire to have people like me. Like, I like people for the feeling of being liked in return. I've been shown, forcefully, <laughs> hey, your eagerness to be close to people or to make people like you is kind of making you a dick sometimes. And that was hard. It's been hard. It's still hard. I'm in the midst of it. I think that the best that you can do is to be selfish in a way that helps the most people possible. So for me, my selfish desire to be really popular and to be liked, I think makes me good at making friends and connecting with people. Spend some time with the people that you love this week. Sincerely, even if it's over the phone, life is just super transient, you know? And it can end at any moment. We don't know when it's gonna stop. And uh, it's a beautiful gift that we've been given. So take advantage of it and share your love with other people. Because there's only one you and no one in the world that's ever gonna be like you. You're the only one of you that's ever gonna be. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed this episode of Doodle Hats. I will see you again next time. Uh, if you would like, if you go to, so scroll down, if you click here, you can type in a comment, just drag your cursor down, click there, uh, use your keyboard to say, you know, whatever it is you want to say, like, hey, it's mom. And then you just click comment, and then you, and then that's there. This is a button that you can click uh, using your mouse pad that'll subscribe you to the channel. If you click the, the thumbs up button, that means you liked it. If you click it down, that means you're a dick. Well, I hope that explanation explained everything. See you next time, bye. I didn't drink like any of this tea. Also, I have to do all this laundry now. First world problems.